which brings us to um, the crown tournament in which Vlad won. And Vlad and I had been friends for years. Mm -hmm. um, we talked shop, we talked Romani, we, mm -hmm. it, and <clears throat> it was fantastic to have someone to talk to about Romani that was outside of it. He is arguably one of the most approachable of the peers that I know. Mm -hmm. um, when he won, I will, I will never forget where I was and I will never forget <laughs> my thoughts. Um, as a friend in the stands, when he got into the finals, I am, you know, rooting for my friend, mm -hmm. you know, and Final shot lands, and I come to the realization that Vlad has won. My first instinct was to scream and cheer. My second instinct was to sit down on the bleacher and go, oh, now I have to rearrange my entire schedule. <laughs> like, my you weren't the only one. Mm -hmm. and for, I for context of my non on and viewers, I am used to there being a big cheer when someone wins crown tournament. Mm -hmm. I'm not exaggerating. My ears were ringing five minutes after they stopped shouting. Like the, I, he was one, arguably one of the most pop, yeah, one of the most popular crowns in the last which 30 was years. evident at his coronation. We'll um, get to that. Okay, yes, <laughs> um, but I screeched. I mean, I cheerfully, gleefully. Gleefully? I'm not sure if that was a word. Gleefully. With no, that's glee. a word. Good. Yeah, gleefully is a um, word. I am all for creating <laughs> new words. Um, but I screamed. I was ecstatic. Mm -hmm. And then it was a sit down and went, and now I'm getting put to work. And you also, the interesting thing there is the SCA now had, I believe, at least on Sierra, had his first Romani crown. Mm -hmm. Did we want to leverage into that? Did we want to just leave it as he's a fighter in Turk's clothing? How are we approaching this? He leaned into it. Oh, didn't he? <laughs> when it came time to plan his <clears throat> coronation, mm -hmm. it was constant back and forth communications. Um, and it, he, he reached out to me and said, I want to... It, not necessarily I want to have a Romani coronation. It was a, I want to include appropriate cultural aspects of the Romani in my coronation. And this is from, but he's talking about a culture which academically would be considered nomadic. Migratory. Migratory, that's a excuse me. That's, that's a completely different. Okay, my, yep. my, my apologies. But they would not have had a monarchy. They would not have had a stable or a static crown. So there's no immediate monarchical traditions so you, you really had your work cut. How the hell do you incorporate a group that moves around and doesn't have a set government into a high Europe or a middle mid, middle period European coronation? Oh how no. Did, how did you bridge this? I was approached with a a research topic to which there was no previous information. We're back to square one. Only um, Castiana could frame it this way. I don't know why I do this to myself. I have mentioned many times I like to make everything harder on myself, mm -hmm. but the reward, the personal reward from it, I feel is worth all the stress and blood and tears that goes into it. Um, I started looking for um, documentation of um, marriages, uh, funerals, okay. engagements, anything that would consider, be considered to be a high ceremony, an important ceremony. Um, that's what a coronation is. So while I didn't have any framework for a specific Romani coronation, I did have information about celebratory practices. Um, and so that's what I went with. Okay. Um, um, the two, the two most notable things, I guess, um, in almost all of the information I have, all of the research I have, the traditional feast food mm -hmm. that was served at engagements, weddings, funerals, was hedgehog. And we're not talking about the African pygmy hedgehog that most people think of as a pet. 
We are talking about the European rodent. It it was a good meat source. Okay. Um, okay. I do not know where this. I'm learning strange new things in these kind of these interviews. I, I just have to say. I I don't know where it started. There's no information. Wait wait wait. So you're where we have the hedgehog tradition and unsteer and cooking. Not up to this point. No. Okay. I am not aware of a hedgehog tradition. Well, there's the little baked uh, like baked apples with stuff put in them called hedgehogs. I like guess are you. Do you know when that started? No. I don't know either. But I do know when I remember first seeing it, and that was at my wedding. Ah, okay. I am not going to claim that this started an on steward tradition. I was simply not aware of it, and my okay. my house sisters, uh, my best friends, we initially tried to figure out how to have actual hedgehog. Which would be considered, I believe, mundanely bushmeat, wouldn't it? Mm-hmm. You cannot keep European hedgehogs as pets in the U.S., nor can you transport rodent as a meat source. Yeah. There was no way yeah, of that's, getting... That's it, not going to be doable. Nope, gotcha. not doable. Um, so my nearest and dearest created hedgehog subtleties, food that was prepared to look like hedgehog. Okay, okay. Which was what we ended up doing at Vlad's coronation. I, I suggested that. that he have a subtlety competition, <clears throat> with the theme being hedgehogs. So at Vlad's coronation, there was a whole, I think, three long tables lined up, and one is an L. It, it ended up being oh, yeah, a great huge. turnout. Yeah, turnout, massive. Um, of hedgehog. As a feast. I had it, no I remember that they announced the hedgehog. I had no idea that subtlety had any ties to Romani culture. That's why so. we chose to do that. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, I mean I'm one of their best friends and I didn't know this, so it's like okay. I, I have had numerous people where this has popped up in conversation uh -huh. randomly and organically talking about hedgehogs being a traditional Romani food, which I will I will tack on. That's why we had hedgehog subtlety competition at Vlad's coronation. Oh, and everyone God. goes, oh! <laughs> it just, I guess it appeared to be a random choice. It definitely hedgehogs. predates the coronation. It's not completely new, but the definitely the Romani or Rom All right, I've been ditzing back and forth. Is it Romani or Roma or Rom? I say Romani. Romani. But I will caveat. I tend to say everything with a Spanish accent. I don't know if I'm saying okay, it correctly. Okay, that's fair. If you hear me go back and forth, it's because I have a thick tongue and, and butcher any accent I touch, including my only accent, English. So, I have heard it Rom, I've heard it Roma, I've heard it Romani, I've heard it Romani. Um, okay. My default is Romani. Okay. But I am not but claiming not. that that is... As long as I'm not accidentally accidentally uh, uh, elevating some horrible, vindictive mispronunciation that some, not to my that some historical villain has used. Not to my knowledge. Um, okay, so hedgehog, that's actually good to know, to be fair. That was the first element that, was the that we first. decided on. Keep going, because <laughs> I, I know where it's going to end up. I wish I had the script in front of me, because mm -hmm. I would love to read it. The second element, and to me, the most important element, and we had historical precedence for it. There was a pope, again, I wish I had this information right in front of me. As I am looking for books, I do not think I have that one right there. Um, a pope gave patents of safe passage to the Romani throughout the Christian Europe, throughout, throughout Christendom. Christian, throughout yeah. Christendom. It was very <clears throat> short-lived, but there is, a, it is an extant document. I have a f scanned, well, not personally, it is in a book. I have found a picture of this document. We have the exact wording of this document. We use that as our starting point. And we wrote an announcement 
of patents of safe passage to the Romani people throughout Onstiora for the duration of his reign. And it was announced as part of his coronation. After the crown, you know, after he placed the crown on his head. It was like his third order of business. It, it, it was, was relatively quick, yes. Yeah. And it was a, Adalia was his herald. Mm -hmm. It was a grand booming, let it be known, that we Vlad extend patents of safe passage to, you know, Romani, Sinti, Romnichel, Domari, um, numerous uh, family groups of the Romani um, as they traveled into Western Europe started going by different names. Um, but there was a long list of them. Safe patents, safe pa patents of safe passage, which includes um, being able to speak their language, wear their, cl wear their clothing, their traditional clothing, and engage in their traditional trade without hindrance. Um, I really wish I had the wording. Um, basically without being bothered. And, um, Which historically, because you're using, you're basing it off an extant document from period. Because mm -hmm. this was, that document was pre-1600, wasn't it? Mm, 13th century? Thir 13th century. That's middle period mm -hmm. for us. Um, I mean, you've checked all of the proverbial boxes for SCA, the rec recreation mm -hmm. side of it. Um, from a political standpoint, that's... It was a on, statement. That's bordering on coup d'etat. I mean, <laughs> that's that's a pushback against all of Everyone the opposition. Who said that it wasn't an appropriate or acceptable persona. And now you have the crown saying otherwise. <laughs> he announced that it was. <laughs> and there was a group that it was not originally my idea, and I am very thankful to whose who, whose idea it was um, to create. A, a movement. <laughs> um, we started mass producing Romani garb. Okay, I remember that, yeah. There were numerous sewing days where we had 8 to 12 people, you mm -hmm. know, in an assembly line, cutting, hemming, sewing, and we created a collection of Romani garb, which numerous people decided to wear at his coronation. I remember that. and it, it was quite the sight because the geometry and the colors really do stand out from almost any other tradition mm -hmm. I have seen in Ansteora. So that was, that was a massive statement. Mm -hmm. Which um, goes back to <coughs> your question of, I have seen people who, you know, have worn Romani garb, mm -hmm. not a predominant persona, but and most of that stems from that garb that we made yeah. for Vlad's coronation. Which is the critical point for the next shifting of gears. Yeah, because this really isn't we're really our move. That was a bookend. That was a massive triumph for you. If, if you were writing a biography, that would be book two. It was not my triumph. I was the resource. It was Vlad's win. It was Vlad's decision. I think that depends on how the narrator of the story frames it, because it depends on how you want to frame the hero of the story. But I will tell you that someone who objectively put as much energy as they did and endured as much opposition as you did, um, I think it's safe to say you have some, some ownership over that win. I don't. I don't really think I'm treading any new ground by saying you get some. You get some credit for this. I get some credit for the Romani, the cultural elements used in his coronation. Mm -hmm. It was his decision. It was. That's why I say fractional. Yep. It was not <laughs> my decision. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> nor was it my win. He won the day. No, oh, he did. He did. He was the crown. And it was his decision. And a lot like that tournament where he was the finalist against Leaf, he was more concerned about other people than his own grandiosity. Mm -hmm. um, and I, that frames perfectly how he approached it. He wanted, he sees an entire group of people that's like, 
oh wait, I can make their lives better by doing this. Yep, that's that's one hundred percent Vlad right there. And I also think it and I am by no means am I trying to speak for him. Mm -hmm. But from my perspective, he always held on to a part of that original Romani persona, his original Romani persona. Mm -hmm. um, and who's going to tell the king no? <laughs> it's good to be king. <laughs> he was king, and he wanted to do it. Yep. And no one could tell him no. Now, before we go into that next chapter, I'm curious. We, I, Depending on who you are and how you saw it, that was a, a massive paradigm shift for Romani persona mm -hmm. in Ansteura. Um, and I will also point out, in terms of audience enthusiasm, that coronation was mind-bogglingly intense. When they did the... the Calling of, of the populace to swear fealty. Okay, set stage on this. We are in a church. Mm -hmm. I want to say the seating was for 300 people in the pews. It wasn't, it wasn't absolutely full, but that gives you an idea of how many mm -hmm. pews there were. We did all of the traditional fealties. Lore, uh, knights, laurels, pelicans. Landed, landed. greater officers. We didn't, have, we didn't have masters of defense yet. Uh, no. No. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, I can't speak for any other kingdom, but at the end of that part is when they say anyone from the populace who wants to come who up. Who to swear fealty. Who, who has not sworn fealty already. Mm-hmm. Now, this is traditional. It happens at every coronation. And at, no. past, at past coronations and even coronations since <clears> then, <throat> you get a goodly number of people who get up and go swear fealty. Anywhere you from also have 5 to 30, I would say. You also have a number of people who majority of people stay in their seats. A majority of people. I mean, and just objectively, of, you know, I'd say maybe 50, maybe 50 or 60 so peers are total there. Mm -hmm. between the three peerages that they called up. And then maybe 30 more people would would pretty much glom in on, on the royal party. Mm -hmm. He called, or the Herald called for any members of the populace, the entire room. Got, I'm not joking. I was, I turned around and looked. There were five people left in the pews, and it's because they had cameras in their hands filming it. Most of them. I, True. Not I, everyone got up. That might be slight. No, 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 no. Right, Shh. It was five. It was five. I think I was the only one that didn't go up and didn't have a camera in his hand. No disrespect to Vlad. I have, I have a different take on fealty, which is why I didn't swear fealty to the man, but I did go up after the ceremony and make a personal oath to him. There are many yeah. people who simply will do not, not swear. swear fealty to the There family. are plenty of people who will not swear fealty except for <laughs> Vlad. Oh, it, it must have been 130, 140 people stacked up. It's like a, we did not have. There were people just standing up where they were in the pew. We couldn't all. Oh yeah, oh yeah. The 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 the, the pile was went out multiple pews. It was. It is the largest number of personal fealties I have ever seen at a coronation. It's the largest number I've ever heard of, and I'm the. And I'm, an on steward coronation. And I'm the dork that asks those type of questions, like, how many people traditionally do this? And mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, I think we found a new high number. Mm -hmm. um, in the months and years after Vlad's reign, did we see continued effects from that? Did the, did the, did the, the paradigm shift stay shifted after that? Except on... except on very, very specific and rare occasions, I have not heard any cautionary tales, any backlash, any warning me or warning anyone away from playing Romani personas. I have not heard it since his reign. And as a point of tangible evidence, um, I know, well, first of all, Vlad being Romani and having a Romani persona made mm -hmm. peerage before he made crown. Mm -hmm. um, I know uh, Damon Xanthos is a grant level, mm -hmm. and you are a double grant, aren't you? Correct. So Damon Xanthos is not a Romani persona. 
I'm sorry, I thought his was... Italian to my knowledge. I thought his original, I thought Wookiee was a, I know it was a Star Wars reference, but... It was not. I, it is his story to tell. Okay. But for then, as long as I've known him, and I was his newbie, he was the one who brought me into the SCA. Okay, then um, we will nix that, because yeah. I don't want to drag a name into it. Nope. To my knowledge, he has never played a Romani person. In terms of tangible evidence of, of moving the needle, mm -hmm. the person who is told you will never get anywhere if you play Romani is currently sitting here with not one, but two grants of arms mm -hmm. uh, to their credit. Um, a Star of Merit and an Iris, Iris. Service and Arts in Ansteora. We can tell the story about my Iris. It is following this, it is on the topic. It is your story to tell, go ahead. At, we are now at 40th year. Vlad was yep. crowned at 40th year. Um, we are at court and my name is called. I walk up to the front and genuflect before the crown and Vlad stands up and says, so I was told by numerous people that you deserve a thistle for Romani research. But I'm not going to give you one. <laughs> yeah, that's why. And he bestows upon me the Iris of Merit. Um, for my non onsteron viewers, the Thistle is a discipline-specific AOA level arts and science award, of which I have several, you have, have several. Or two? Two. Um, two. And you, you can get as many as you want. I, current record, I think, it to be the six. But who knows? Yeah. But it um, is, it is, yes, topic specific. Yeah, topic you specific. You get a thistle in embroidery. You a, get a thistle in research. In, to be a, fair, a thistle in a specific discipline of research is absolutely valid, and it, there's precedence for it. So there's mm -hmm. nothing, there's nothing sidestepping or, dimin or diminutive about that recommendation. Oh, no, it's. However, the iris is not a discipline specific. It is a holistic grant of arms in the arts and sciences. Over the purview of arts and sciences. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I, that, that's exactly how I would see Vlad saying that, I, so that tracks. To my knowledge, I have never, I have no knowledge of an iris being granted for a specific discipline. No, I, and that's that, not that what is, the award no, is. No, it's not. It is, it is a, a broad spectrum in the arts and sciences. His decision was to grant me an iris grant, to bestow upon me an iris for Romani research. And that, yes, we could, this could get into... In nuances Ca of awards. Castiana and I are the people who would get into this particular set of nuances because we are those type of geeks. Mm -hmm. um, but saying that your Romani research is what pushed the needle into grant level work, that's absolutely well and good, um, but at the same time there is no such thing as a iris in, in, a, specific in a specific field. You are, and it's not even an award, it's an order. Yes. And um, I, I, for my viewers who've seen the other videos, you can receive multiple awards. You can receive multiple thistles, you can receive multiple talons and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, an order you are admitted into. It is the order of, in my case, the Star of Merit. It's mm -hmm. a order for service, and Castellana's is a order for service, and this one is an order for yeah. grant level arts and sciences. Mm -hmm. the which, iris of <laughs> um, but the iris uh, is um, a, a large element of research, of teaching, of display, demonstration, and mm -hmm. so forth. So. I've heard some people refer to it as a baby peerage, which I'm not thrilled with that comparison. But all I, of all of the buttons are there. You know, it's are you displaying? Are you researching? Are you showing? Are you teaching? You know, that type of thing. It it is the bridge from AOA. an award versus a peerage acceptance into an order. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, okay, I'm I'm done harping on because that that really was a consummate moment. It, in, in he a lot definitely of played a part in where my SCA <clears throat> career, if you want to call it, what I do in the SCA. He played a pivotal role into where I went next. 
Now, <laughs> where you went next, we say this as they sit in a kingdom level office. <laughs> do we want to do we want to say the office and talk about then talk about it, or do you just want to start from the beginning and, and drag our viewers by the nose down this trail? It's after a break. Sold. <laughs> 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 